It's Easter weekend and the hills are calling. In two weeks time, my girlfriend Em and I are heading off across Europe on a recumbent tandem bicycle, and we decided to get the old legs moving on Say Yes More's ice trikes, which are available for any member of the Yes tribe to borrow for an adventure. We started our journey at the Yes Bus, a double-decker bus conversion which we're developing into a really cool meeting, co-working and learning hub. After a solid breakfast browsing through catalogues for light fittings and power sockets, it was time to say cheerio to Chris the bus boss and head for the hills. I haven't yet come across a way to travel without a motor that's more fun than an ice trike. It's fast, stable, low to the ground, so you can really feel the turns. It's nothing less than thrilling when rushing downhill. Our aim for the weekend was to complete a loop of southern London, so we headed south into greener pastures, slowly leaving London's Urbania behind. I came to a lock gate, <laughs> sign of the times, and we're trying to find a way around this farmhouse. <laughs> in the middle of a golf course. There's only like 50 metres of road that we can't access because of this gate. Luckily it looks like we can find a way through. I feel a little bit naughty though, sneaking around a, like a golf course. At least I'm wearing camouflage. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that the originality of the trikes helps to break the ice, but every time I'm out on this three-wheeler, I encounter kindness. <laughs> Friendliness. So we're out on the ice trikes and found this delightful little cycle path that goes right next to a very scary looking road that we thought we were on. And look, no hands. <laughs> Good morning. So we have triked over to Box Hill uh, we pushed the trikes up the top of Box Hill. Oh my god, it doesn't look that high from the bottom. Yep, I had a bit of a camp out at the top, which was very nice. Woke up this morning to uh, blossom falling from the trees, which is gorgeous. And we're about to do the longest trip I've ever done on a bike. Uh, well, I've ever done on a trike for sure. <laughs> Showing a bit of, uh, we're, we're drawing quite a lot of attention on the trikes. We're cycling today probably about 30, somewhere between 30 and 40 miles. We've not decided where we're gonna end up yet. I'm excited to go quite far today. And I'm interested to see what my body's gonna feel like tomorrow. So, wish me luck. Em was riding on a Sprint 26 model that I crossed Europe on a couple of years ago. And I was on the Ice Adventure, which has suspension on the main frame and smooths out the bumps you get from flying down a grassy hill. What a cool way to start the day. <laughs> We made our way east and then started to bank north towards London, finding quiet country lanes as much as possible. <laughs> it naturally got busier as we crossed back over the M25. Even on the busier roads though, ice trikes feel superbly safe. Recumbents seem to have a bad reputation for some reason, but for me that's fake news. The flag offers good visibility, sure, but the very fact that the ice trike looks unusual is what keeps the rider safe. Passing drivers are more likely to notice an unfamiliar shape and therefore show more caution, which means we're always given a wide berth. <laughs> this little tricrew adventure has done weird things to M. We just found a park, perfectly decent bench, and <laughs> we found a lovely suburban wood 15 miles south of Greenwich, perfect for the hammocks and a healthy fish and chip dinner. The next morning I woke early and decided to see how much camp I could take down before Em woke up. I thoroughly recommend this game next time you're camping with a partner or friend. We had a few spots of rain, but when on a road trip I always travel with Ortley bags which are fully waterproof and clip handily onto the ice trike's rear pannier rack. It doesn't take long before you get used to a way of travelling and after a couple of days we had a system for nipping beneath the round or over the various barriers you inevitably encounter on a journey. I'll admit that was just clever editing. I'm not one for playing chicken with trains. 
For all the fun of being in the open air though, I'll never get over the feeling of nearing home. We met the Thames at Greenwich, had a closer look at the Cutty Sark and were then very thankful for the enormous lift down to the Under River Tunnel, over to the Isle of Dogs. That one saved us at least a hundred steps at each end. Once on the North Bank, we only had a couple of miles left, past Canary Wharf, savouring the river path and the now familiar roads back to our floating home, knowing full well that we'd soon be able to satisfy a very British craving. Oh, I'm dying for a couple. The weekend wasn't quite over though. I'd been invited to share some tales at an event called Sunday Papers Live, so we hopped across town to a hall full of sofas Sunday and bean bags. Live. Are you ready to be your travel editor? Would you please welcome to the stage Dave Conquest? Who is currently doing a job that they don't really want to be doing? 10% of the route, so 90% of you are geniusly happy Monday to Friday. <laughs> I might as well just do it. I'm not the right guy for this. <laughs> it was a super afternoon, but I was better prepared for it having been outside all weekend. I really like the concept of travelling yourself clever. The stimulation we get from even a little adventure makes us more aware and takes things to the next level. And you realise then that it's the little things that count, like... It's amazing, there's a tiny child dressed as a bunny who just walked in. <laughs> I love this event, it's brilliant. <laughs> so... <laughs> I think my favourite moment of the weekend though came as I made this film and realised that when Em is doing a video blog, she just can't concentrate when a dog walks into the background. I'm excited to see... <laughs> I just can't wait to go travelling with this woman. I can't stop the video, <laughs> I'm going too fast! <laughs> Thank you.